Hello, my name is Dave Watkins. I work at Deutsche Bank and today we're going to be talking about waltz. So over the course of this talk we'll be going over what waltz is, um, a high level summary. We'll talk a little bit about its history and we'll devote quite a bit of time to going through its feature set and how we use it. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the future, how to get started with waltz in your organisation and how to contribute back to the code base. So what exactly is Waltz? Uh, Waltz is an enterprise system. Uh, we like to think of it as an open approach to enterprise architecture. Uh, we're trying to help organizations deal with very large and complex technical estates. Uh, so to that end, we're primarily interested in applications as our sort of primary unit. Uh, we look at how they fit together in terms of data flows, who's working on them, and uh, we look at their sort of characteristics in terms of what functions do they offer, what services do they provide, what process do they participate in. Uh, we look at how the applications are entwined within regulations and uh, compliance issues and ultimately how the organisation is changing as applications are commissioned and decommissioned and functions are moved around the, the organisation. Um, we've got a wide set of users, uh, range from developers, project managers, analysts. Um, we've got about 15,000 active users in the bank uh, and we're seeing about two and a half thousand user driven changes per month. So that's people coming into Waltz and amending the data in there uh, to correct it or to keep it up to date. Waltz is now around six years old. Started as a purely open source project up on GitHub so all of the commits are available going back to project inception and it was started before I joined the bank. However, Deutsche Bank were a very early adopter and have since become by far the largest single contributor to the code base. Over that time, uh, there's been probably around three to four developers at any one time working on Waltz plus an analyst or two, uh, which has added up to quite a bit of effort over the years and the project earlier this year transitioned to the FinOS organisation, so we went through their project activation uh, criteria, ensuring that we've got uh, clean IP um, and our code meets their standards. Uh, we've been in production for four years uh, at Deutsche Bank and at NatWest Markets we've been in for a couple of years. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Waltz in detail. So we'll look at its feature set, the core entities and how those entities and features are used together. Um, this will take the form of a demo, um, which we'll be covering the following topics. Uh, we're going to look at the building blocks, so applications or units, for example. We'll look at how data flows are modeled in Waltz. Um, look at some of the aggregation capabilities and some of the reporting that's built in. Uh, we'll look at surveys uh, for capturing ad hoc data requests and looking at attestations for ensuring that data is up to date. Applications are one of the fundamental building blocks in Waltz. So let's take a quick look at one. Use my recent list to open up this sample application. Uh, so here we can see the basics about the application, its name, where it is in production, what sort of application it is, is it in-house, is it off the shelf, etc. Uh, this is who owns it, so this is a link into the organisational hierarchy. And um, we can see, you know, with the application being invested. Um, aliases we found to be useful. Uh, quite often applications are known by multiple names or undergo name changes throughout their life cycle. Uh, and so in the aliases field we can track those. Um, complexity rating is currently kind of uh, uses things like looking at the number of servers or the number of links an application has to other so other uh, applications uh, to try and give a ballpark uh, complexity estimate uh, alongside a bunch of other bits and pieces such as retirement dates etc. Um, going into more detail we have these sections so we have one for say bookmarks where we look at uh, key bookmarks for an application so uh, we might ask for people to fill in things like links to source code, links to documentation, links to issue trackers. Uh, we'll ask or we can bring in information about costs. Uh, so this is typically imported from other systems. 
uh, to give us a feel for relative sizes of applications. Uh, we have some basic stats that we capture around every application. Uh, quite often these are things like compliance measures or uh, stats, say number of uh, database tables, etc. Um, people. Um, this is looking at, we've got usually bring in the entire organizational tree uh, and link people to applications. Uh, this allows us then to quickly show all of the apps belonging to people uh, and pivot the data that way, which we'll see so shortly. Um, the other one I want to focus on right now is on technology. Uh, so here we can sort of see, okay, these are brought in, it's a list of servers associated with the applications or databases or software, for instance, we've linked our instance of Waltz to Artifactory to bring in a detailed software breakdown for each application. And from there, we can work out licenses and things like vulnerabilities uh, in terms of risk uh, for license risk, uh, looking at incompatible licenses, for example. Two of the mechanisms that Walt offers for capturing custom data around applications are assessments and ratings. Assessments are kind of like a single data point about an application. So we have assessment definitions for things like records management, legal holds, uh, compliance with various policies, etc. They're stored here uh, and users can either input them directly into the application or they can be provided programmatically and marked as read-only. In addition to assessments, Walt supports aligning applications to taxonomies via the ratings mechanism. So in here we've got ratings for an application, in this case it's just aligned against one of the taxonomies in Walt, the functional taxonomy, and we can see here that three items have been uh, chosen. So it's got positions, risk and reporting. Uh, the little icons next to them indicate things like this function is being retired from this application at a certain date. Uh, the handover icon implies that this application is taking on board this function from another application and the little pointer says that this application is handing off this function somewhere else. Uh, so I can see from here just at a glance that this application is really consolidating around the risk function. Uh, the little pie charts indicate that there are allocations associated with this application. So here we can see okay there's a cost allocation scheme and we can see what the breakdown is for this application. These are of course are either user editable or can be provided uh, via external systems and marked as read-only. Another key aspect of Waltz is looking at data and data flows within an organisation. To that end we have a data taxonomy uh, which you may declare which is registers all the data types. Uh, here's a sample one that we've generated for the test data uh, and we can also declare uh, which systems are authoritative for those data types. So this table here shows okay for this data type for this part of the organization then this is either an authoritative or a secondary source of data for that uh, for that data type. Uh, if we look at how that looks in practice on an application level let's go and take another look at the application we're looking at earlier and look at the data flow section. So here we can see a breakdown of various aspects of the data flows that we have for this application but the main bit concerned with is this diagram at the bottom. Uh, this shows fairly clearly the upstream systems, the downstream systems and our system in the middle, Fox Terrier. It's broken down by the data types that it consumes or produces and we can see, okay, these systems are feeding it, these it's sending out to the system. These little annotations here are just showing you whether or not we have examples of the types of data that's being fed. So whether people have documented the actual flow specifications. Um, if we take a closer look at these, then we can see, okay, here's the file. And in this one, there should be more than one file because the icon's slightly different. Uh, just indicating that there are multiple files there. Uh, the colours on these lines go back to those authoritative sources we talked about a few minutes ago. So American Foxhound, for example, has been uh, identified as an authoritative source for transaction data, hence this arc is in green. Um, whereas 
hold, uh, whereas uh, these applications, so if transaction data, there may there is an authoritative source, uh, but it isn't Tiffany, um, which is why it'd be red. Uh, where the line is black, that's just indicating that no authoritative statement covers this type of data for this part of the bank or part of the organization. Um, we can fo focus in on these, especially useful when the diagrams get more complex and uh, we can add new ones fairly simply. Uh, although there's a mixture at the moment of these things being registered by hand and registered programmatically from other sources. Um, we also have this other annotation here which shows a pending change. Uh, so this is something that's fairly new. Uh, if we look at the change sets coming into this application we can see that there's one change set associated with it uh, and it's got in, in particular a bunch of uh, flow changes which are potentially affecting this application. So here we can see one that there is a retirement of this uh, report pending uh, as part of this change which can optionally be linked to a, uh, a change initiative declaration. If we go back to our application we can start looking at the flows in more detail, taking more of a lineage view. So this has given us very much a sort of point to point or neighbours kind of view, you know, upstream and downstream neighbours, uh, but we may want to show more of a lineage type view. Uh, to that end we have the diagram section and you can create diagrams in Waltz quite quickly using a kind of constrained uh, editor. So this is one I just drew earlier, started at Fox Terrier and worked backwards through the systems showing you know, which data is being fed by which systems. So this is just showing you the upstream systems uh, and these little things in the circle is just where we have documentation for the actual flows that have been passed. The question marks when we don't and you can add basic annotations onto the diagram. Changing the diagram is quite simple. If we wanted to add a new system it then goes and queries the uh, the flow information that we have in Waltz and just shows you uh, only the possible upstream systems. So we can say okay I want to show these three systems and go through and again using the constraints we can say okay I want to show just those two flows. Once this is saved uh, this diagram will be cross-referenced against every system that is mentioned within it. So I think we just included Wombat so if we go and have a look at Wombat we can see it is now being cross-referenced on that diagram. Uh, effectively we're storing a kind of bill of materials uh, behind each diagram so that we can do that cross-referencing quickly and that goes down to every part of the diagram so every flow that's mentioned on there, every file, uh, will be uh, indexed and cross-referenced to this diagram. So far we've been primarily looking at individual applications in Waltz and uh, describing the characteristics of those. Waltz can also uh, be used to aggregate applications either by sort of intrinsic uh, aggregation groups uh, such as org units, people or via sort of user-defined uh, mechanisms such as uh, ad hoc application groups. So we take a look at uh, say org unit as a grouping mechanism. So we look at one of the org units the CIO office. And we can see it's got 24 applications in this group in sample data. Um, we can see you know, the applications that make this up, uh, the costs, complexity etc, uh, any indicators that are there uh, which are the we use extensively in the bank for sort of KPIs, KRIs. Um, this lets us sort of quickly view how well we're doing I guess, across these measures but also jump off to get more detail about you know what actually makes up those numbers and also to do quick comparisons so we can compare across parts of the bank quite quickly by using this little uh, mini navigation selector here. Um, going back to this list here we can see we've also got things such as attestations so uh, in this case we've got no attestations but we can schedule attestation runs for different types of data so far uh, in Waltz we've got attestation support for flows, physical flows and for um, 
uh, the taxonomy ratings. We uh, can have bookmarks, linked to change initiatives, and data flows is where we start seeing the data in aggregate. Here, so we've got a false directed graph, uh, obviously due to the sample data nature, um, it looks a bit of a mess, uh, but we can do things like filter it out according to data type, um, or show only inbound flows, um, or outbound flows. Uh, obviously the full data is available as well, should you wish to export it. Um, the ratings section is quite useful. Uh, the ratings that we were looking at earlier, so we'd align, I think, uh, Fox Terrier to risk. Uh, we can see now for this group of applications within the CIA office or unit, uh, this is their sort of functional makeup. And we can also see here some of the other taxonomies that are in this sample data set. So we've got an example process taxonomy, a product taxonomy, a regulatory taxonomy. Um, drilling in each one of these shows you the actually the data underneath. So we can drill in and say, okay, these are the applications that make up these little bar charts, which are going to be aggregated up and color coded according to the, the ratings used within that taxonomy. Uh, so in this example, we've just got a very simple sort of uh, RGB, sorry, not RGB, uh, <laughs> RAG, RAG status uh, for um, the ratings on those appli applications to the function. Um, reports is kind of new, uh, so we've added this thing called the data grid. It's not an interesting one, let me switch to this one. This is to support uh, some of the cloud readiness thing that we're, we're doing in the bank at the moment. Um, so this allows us to cherry pick uh, a set of attributes, so either assessments or the measurables, uh, sorry, the taxonomy ratings, and define them in a grid, and then the applications in this group, or any group, will be the rows, and we can quickly see we've got this nice data grid, and we can add these to the summarising columns, so we added to summaries we can quickly use these as sort of filter mechanisms to say show me you know all the applications uh, which are good or adequate for BCBS and that are adequate for governance obviously these uh, ratings would make more sense uh, with realistic data uh, but we're finding that quite useful uh, in particular we're looking at it for cloud readiness so we have assessments based upon you know how um, it, how well suited you, we think applications are uh, to migrate to cloud infrastructure. Other types of um, aggregation uh, are things like people. You can see here we've got a person. Uh, we can see that they've got a very similar set of views. They've got uh, costs and things. We've got the same ratings type of view. We've got the same reports which are dynamically generated just for that person and the applications that they are involved with. Uh, we can do the same for the functions or any of the taxonomy items. So looking at risk of the function, uh, we can see you know the same sort of thing. We've got the applications, the data flows, uh, we've got the the ratings and reports, etc. Um, we can also define custom app groups. So when there isn't a sort of uh, intrinsic uh, organizing mechanism, such as people, org units, taxonomy items, uh, we can define ad hoc groups where we can just create a new group and add applications to it. There's also a app group for every person called your favorite group, where if you add applications to that group, um, either by editing the group or as you're navigating through Waltz, you can add them by the little bookmark icon here. Uh, then it gets added to your favorite group. And then any time the application or any of the apps in this group change in terms of, you know, the, their records in Waltz get updated. So new flows, new functions, uh, new bookmarks. Uh, then this calendar chart will be filled in, uh, letting you know that there's been some changes to apps that you're possibly interested in and you can drill in and say hey, what's actually happened 
So here I can drill in and see, okay, for this application on this day, uh, you know, there's a flow added, remove data from application, modify the application. Another key usage of Waltz within organizations is around its ability to issue surveys to collect uh, data on an ad hoc basis. Uh, surveys can be defined by administrators. Uh, for example, here's the one we created earlier. Where's the templates? Get okay, a demo survey. So you've got a very simple survey which has got some questions. Uh, so it's a fictitious cloud migration. Uh, but we can also have things like conditional questions, and conditional questions can take two forms. They can either be um, predicated, questions can be predicated on uh, previous answers within the same survey. So this is a simple, this question appears if this value is checked, uh, and this one appears if this value is greater than six. Uh, but they can also be ones that are more environmental. Uh, predicates. So this is looking at a attribute of the application being surveyed and saying does its sensitive data assessment rating equal S, which is the code for sensitive in our data model uh, that we've defined. Uh, we've got to have a look at how that works in practice. So we'll have a look at Fox Terrier. So I've currently set its sensitive data flag to just internal or uh, we can set it to lower and just say it's public. Uh, so now when we look at this assessment, or sorry, when we look at this survey, we should see, okay, we've got uh, even scope, yes, no, with the first predicate. The other question was, you know, if it was greater than six, then a high estimate, uh, but we're not seeing that question about sensitive data. If we uh, go back and we change the sensitive data assessment for this application and say that it is strictly confidential, Save that and we go and go back into the survey. You can see we've now got this question appearing for uh, the sensitive data question. Once a, once a survey is submitted, it can be sent back to its owners, uh, the people who issued it, and they can either approve or reject the survey if it needs more work doing to it. Um, also, when surveys are created, uh, there's two real ways of uh, initiating a survey. One is kind of ad hoc. Applications can sort of self, or uh, sorry, applications can sort of raise their own issues, or people can raise them on a case by case basis. Uh, the other way of raising surveys is you can create a survey run. Um, where we go into the template, we can say, okay, I want to create a run. And here we say, what we're actually doing is we want to issue this survey to a set of applications or change initiatives uh, which meet certain criteria. So we give it a run name, uh, some contact details, but here is the, the key bit. We can say, okay, send it to everyone in this app group, send it to everyone in this org unit, send it to applications that do this taxonomy item. The exact is whether or not uh, you want to send it to children of this org unit as well. So say we just sent it to uh, the risk department, we might want all of the uh, the sub-departments to also fill this in. Just in. A uh, risk IT, that would include all the other IT, the risk departments. Uh, then it's a question of who is going to be filling this in. And this is again where we start reaching into the Waltz data model and say, okay, we now know from this selector uh, which applications are involved, so everything to do with RISC, everything associated with RISC IT, the org unit, uh, and now what we want to do is we want it to be the data owner, the architect, the IT architect and the IT lead. And we can then say, okay, who, how do we want this to be filled in? Is it um, for a group, as in anyone can fill it in, or is this an individual, everyone has to fill it in? Uh, and once we've filled in the rest of the data, then we should be able to issue that survey. Oh, and we haven't managed to catch in my sample data anyone who uh, is. Oops. Is there? We issue the survey, and now that survey run has been generated. We can click, create an email if we wish to, uh, but we can also now see we've got a new run uh, where we can see that there are seven. 
uh, surveys outstanding. Now you may have noticed that there was a lot more people listed there. It's because I ended up selecting everyone and the group nature of the survey means there was only actually seven surveys issued but more people had been invited to participate. Um, yes, yeah, surveys have proven to be quite popular. Uh, we use them a lot around sort of some of the governance metrics, oh, sorry, the governance processes, uh, so funding processes uh, and also some of the records management type of uh, processes where we are doing uh, in-depth questionnaires for applications which meet certain criteria. Okay, that concludes the sort of demo part. Uh, we're now going to talk a little bit about, you know, um, futures, you know, where Waltz is heading, um, how to get started with Waltz, and how you can start making contributions, should you wish to. So, uh, one of the key challenges that we're facing uh, in the coming sort of months, years, is uh, the gradual shift of the unit of sort of deployment moving from sort of applications, sort of monolithic type applications, towards much smaller components, microservices, lambdas, etc. Uh, trying to figure out, you know, how do we document those? What is the correct unit of sort of measurement? What policies and procedures need to be in place? How can we aggregate them uh, so as not to uh, basically bombard the owners with lots and lots of documentation requests? Um, another key part is opening up Waltz, uh, the data set uh, via APIs. Uh, so that we've been asked to do quite a lot. We've done some of that internally within the bank. Uh, so we'll be looking to how we can industrialize some of that and contribute that to the open source project. Um, automated data capture. So quite often some of the data sets are manual uh, and we've written various feeds into other systems to bring data in. Uh, it would be nice to start exploring uh, some more sort of uh, official uh, integrations with uh, other products to bring data sets in. Workflow support, we've seen some basic workflow around things like the surveys, um, how we've been asked increasingly to um, put workflow around various change sets within Waltz um, so that you know, data can be tracked and assigned to reviewers etc. Um, finally the cloud migration kind of dovetails into the first point uh, is that we're really looking at sort of visualizations uh, to help support uh, the cloud migration. So a lot of the recent work we've been doing has been sort of rooted in some of those efforts. Uh, the dashboarding thing you saw, the grid report, uh, certainly a lot of the assessments and the ratings are sort of geared now towards uh, looking at how um, we can document applications as they move from on-prem to sort of cloud systems and all of the changes that will be wrought on them as part of that move. Um, getting started. Okay, there's a couple of ways to get started with Waltz. Uh, one of the easiest is if you just want to try out Waltz on, on your own machines, uh, you can download a simple Docker image. Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit out of date at the moment, but I'll get that updated in the next few days, um, which has uh, a Waltz instance running uh, with some sample data. Uh, if you'd rather do a more of an installation process, it's quite simple to set up on a Tomcat container or you can run it as a simple Uberjar. Um, database creation is pretty straightforward, we just use Liquibase. Um, and if you want sample data, there are some sample data generators available in the source code. Uh, it's all documented up on GitHub, uh, look inside the docs folder, uh, reach out if you need some help. Um, we support SQL Server, Postgres and MariaDB. Um, those are the, th the main three that we support. Uh, let us know if there's anything you would like us to support. We can certainly investigate to see how hard it would be to, to add support for other databases. We're relatively database agnostic. Um, finally, on getting started, it's worth pointing out we have a blog. Uh, the blog has couple of articles on how to get started and quite a few screencasts uh, basically aimed at both uh, users of Waltz, administrators and uh, developers. Uh, which brings us to contributing. So should you wish to make a contribution then you would be delighted. Um, reach out to us via the GitHub issues probably best or contact us directly. Uh, there's some good first issues that we've tagged 
in the GitHub Issues um, repository. Uh, and again, we'll be more than happy to help out. Uh, there's some getting started tutorials uh, on our GitHub uh, blog, sorry, on our Finos blog, uh, and some screencasts to help you uh, take your first steps in contributing to Waltz. Okay, that wraps everything up. Um, thanks very much for your time, and we hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.